Welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Something I'm frequently asked about in my video comments is Meshtastic. Do I use it? Have I played around with it? And the answer has always been no. I've heard of it, but I've never played with a Mesh network, I've never played with LoRa, and I just have not had time to do anything with the technology. However, recently my sister got into Meshtastic as well, and she sent me a Meshtastic thing. I'm not even really sure what's in here. Let's take a look. All right, so this appears to be called a T-Deck. It is a ESP32, um, looks like almost a Blackberry. And then uh, we've got some other stuff here. Looks like we've got a 3D printed case, a battery pack, nice big beefy antenna, those are always fun. Antenna adapter, and then this uh, T-Deck gadget with potentially some extra parts in here. This thing looks kind of fun. I, I used to have phones like this, palm trios and whatnot. Um, so yeah, it's got a little screen, a little keyboard, uh, pretty basic. It looks like you can add things onto it here. And it looks like this does have a LoRa radio module for 869-915 megahertz. We also have uh, apparently an LTE antenna. So physically assembling this doesn't look too complicated. We've got the little 3D printed case here, which we can try to open up. Looks like this pops off. This might be where the battery lives. And this is the speaker, and it looks like the speaker probably is supposed to go by this grill. So uh, this is supposedly just double taped on here, so we'll pry that off. And we want this antenna adapter to live in the top of the case. A little bit of a tight fit uh, with these 3D printed things. They're not always printed exactly the right specs, but I think we can get it through there. And I can never remember which side all the little rings and washers go on. I'm just gonna stick them on the top. I'm gonna screw that down. Now this came with a battery adapter pigtail, but I think the battery already has the right connector. So I'm just gonna see if this fits in the top part of the case. All right, so that just kind of gently snaps in here with all these little clips around the edge. There we go. Took a little fiddling, but that is in the top of the case now. My hands are a little too big for all these teeny little wires on these things. Yeah, these gadgets are fun, but they're not made for big fat American fingers. So I am using tweezers to try to get this little thing into its home. Yeah, that speaker's kind of a problem. I need some other double-sided tape to get into place here. Gently jam that in here. Then we want to get this little tiny antenna connector onto this little tiny jack, again, without breaking anything, ideally. Boy, this antenna connector is really a pain. I hate these little MMCX things, or whatever this is called. They're just unusable for normal humans. I think we have that on there. You have to have exactly the right combination of very flexible fingers, high dexterity, and then brute force to get it to really lock into place. So that is not a nice connector. Fortunately, it's an adapter out to a regular old SMA, so hopefully we don't have to mess with that again. Some of the guides online said to put a GPS in here. I don't know if we actually need a GPS or if we can do Meshtastic without that. I guess we'll find out. I'm just making sure none of my wires are pinched. Yeah, that, that MCX connector does not clear the 3D printed case. It's sticking out too far. Yeah, this 3D printed case is pretty nice, but the tolerances are so, so tight on here. I had to just nudge things over by millimeters and it's still not quite lined up over here, so yeah, if I was to 3D print this case myself, I might make it like 101% bigger, just so it fit a little bit better. All right, uh, let's see if I did this right. Let's try to turn it on. I guess I've got a pen handy. And it appears we've either not done it right or that battery is not charged, so... Oh, no, there we go. I spoke too soon. It is just booting up. All right, so we had a little uh, self-test there. I guess this is the default operating system that comes with the thing. I don't quite know what characters these are. They must have gotten these keyboards cheap from some discount place uh, once a cell phone maker went out of business. Our little trackball works here, just moves the smiley around the screen. So apparently you can do a variety of things on here, web browsing, VNC, network analysis, um, movie player, but we're trying to do Meshtastic. So I'm going to go on the Meshtastic website, specifically flasher.meshtastic.org. Select my firmware version. I'm just going to go with the a stable one here. And then we need to plug the thing in over USB connection. Now, apparently the next step is to do a factory restart and things may or may not be happening. I can't really tell what's going on at this point. All right, I've kind of started over here. Um, 
There's that thing. See, I want to hit flash, but it won't let me. It keeps jumping over to whatever this page is. Let's try that one more time. Um, now it's working. I guess I jumped ahead a little bit too far there. Okay, and it says it's complete. All right, so I'm going to turn that off, unplug, and back on. Definitely takes it a few seconds. There we go. We have meshtastic.org now. So, yeah, no GPS. We don't have a GPS module with it. I don't really know what else is going on here. We have, uh, looks like a couple bars of battery. Uh, I think zero out of zero messages. We'll see if we can broadcast a test message here. It says it's sending. I don't have another Meshtastic unit, so I have no way to know if that went out or not. Okay, it just flashed an error message there really quick. It said uh, delivery failed to broadcast. So I think we need to do a little bit more setup. So the internet says we need a Meshtastic app on our phone. All right. Um, I guess that is our thing that does stuff. Ah, let's see, we need to set the region so it knows what radio to use. So we're going to go ahead and set that to US. Uh, now it thinks it's at 91% where it was like 30 something percent before. So this little battery, yeah, seems pretty cheap. Um, oh, it went up to 92. We're making power here. It's just sitting here on my desk magically recharging itself. So it seems like most of the settings are easier to do in the app here versus on the tiny Blackberry keyboard. We can do radio configuration and whatnot. Something went wrong here because this won't come back up and it doesn't show up on the app. I'm going to try the reset button on the side here. And we did get our name set to save it for parts, so I don't know if that means that my neighbors can now see me on the mesh network. Um, I'm a total noob to this, so Hopefully I'm not screwing anything up too badly. I guess long fast is our channel. Various mysterious information in here. It looks like anytime I change anything on this, it basically has to reboot itself. Looks like this is our current frequency, 906.875. So while I don't have another LoRa unit, maybe we can listen to this thing with a software defined radio. Now, New Elect just sent me a Hack RF1, which I've been looking for an excuse to try this thing. I have not had much chance to play around with it yet. And I do see some little blips here and there, so there's other stuff happening in that 900 megahertz band. Probably just spamming the local airwaves here, but uh, yeah, we sent it. There's the first pulse. There it goes again. It seems like it sends it uh, three times in a row. I guess that's for redundancy or something. And there's the third one. I enabled this environment setting just to see what it does, and mostly it seems to just lag the thing out. Um, it can't really handle this display, so it is very, very slow now. I think I'm going to have to turn this off again. Okay, so we have our Meshtastic box working. Now what? I only have one of these, so do I get another one and mesh with myself? Do I get one for my neighbors and we send really inconvenient text messages? Do I... Try to find other meshers, meshites. Do I mesh tasticize? What, what do I do with this? What's the use case? This is one of those gadgets that seems really cool, but then once you actually have it in your hand, I struggle to find practical uses for it. I seem to be the only node in the neighborhood, so I can't really talk to anyone else. There's supposed to be a map on the app, but nothing seems to show up on it. I don't know if I need a GPS module before this will work. It, there's also supposed to be this meshmap.net, but uh, my browser and my ISP's antivirus will not let me go there. So Chrome won't let me load it at all. When I try Firefox, my ISP jumps in and says, yeah, you really don't want to go here. This is a really sus website. Um, yeah, it won't even let me load this. Apparently, if I do find other meshites, I can share a QR code with them and get on the same frequency. So I emailed Peter Fairley. He seems to be an expert at this Meshtastic stuff, or at least he's got some interesting videos on it, and I've talked to him online before. So he suggested putting it up on the roof, leaving it there for a while. I'm actually going to try transmitting a message from up on my garage roof. Now I have to say, typing on this thing isn't actually very convenient. If you make a typo over here and notice it at the end, it doesn't seem to be a way to go back. You have to just delete everything and fix your typo and not every key seems to register every time. I left this thing on the roof all day and still nothing. I guess there just aren't any mesh heads in my neighborhood. I also brought the thing to work. I brought it dumpster diving. I brought it out doing chores, picking up a broken boat, all the usual save it for parts stuff. Even just driving around the Twin Cities all day, I still haven't picked up any nodes or messages or anything like that. 
So, yeah, so far this thing seems so useless and pointless that I ordered two more. Uh, not quite this kind. I got two of the small, cheap modules. I'm thinking I'm going to put one in my Raspberry Pi quarter, although it seems like there's no straight answer on whether or not they work very well with a Raspberry Pi. This seems like something that would be really cool uh, as a reuse for old, say, Palm Pilots or Palm Trios or pocket PCs, especially the ones with the built-in keyboards. If somebody wrote a pocket PC app for this and then made a Mesh-tastic compact flash card, that would be really neat. Um, I don't know if the demand is quite out there, but um, yeah, I've got like piles and piles of pocket PCs with built-in keyboards that look just like this thing, and I have no real use for them. In fact, I tried to make my own radio-based messenger with those things, as I showed in a prior video, and everybody said, well, why didn't you just do Meshtastic? Because Meshtastic doesn't work with those things, or at least as far as I can tell. Maybe I'll find a way to use one of the little uh, USB or Bluetooth modules with it, but I think that's going to have to be another video. I'm not really sure what I think of the LilyGo uh, T-Deck here. I wish it did something else. It's great that it'll run Meshtastic, but it's got like a 400 megahertz processor in there. You'd think it could have some apps or programs or something else running so when you're not uh, meshing with people you could use it for other purposes. I'm also not really sure what any of this means, this channel utility and it also says plus U. I think maybe that means it thinks it's plugged into USB. None of this stuff makes any sense to me. I haven't actually found documentation for the interface but I'll have to look around for that some more. Um, the deck itself also seems a little flaky like right now it's not connecting over Bluetooth. It's refusing to connect to my phone. I've rebooted this thing. I've restarted the app on the phone. And then last night, I had the keyboard light up and it would never turn off. It just stayed lit up all night. So I don't know what the deal is with that. These are not really ready for mass market. They're designed for hackers and tinkerers, but even for a casual hacker like myself, they're still a little bit flaky. So there are supposed to be keyboard shortcuts like Alt-B, if I can find it, does turn on keyboard backlight, but it also opens up the messenger and types B. Some of these keyboard shortcuts don't work, like the official documentation says that Alt-C gives you a function icon and then you can type other stuff. None of that works. The battery indicator is also essentially useless. I just charged it up, it was at 100%, it dropped down to 78%, then up to 93 now it's back to 100 So that's just a random number generator as far as I can tell. Yeah, stay tuned to see what I do with two Meshtastic units, because so far I can't really do much with just one. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.